Hey, hey everybody. Happy Monday. I hope you had a wonderful weekend. I am rested and recharged and ready for another week before Christmas. Man, we're getting close. We are getting close. This, uh, today is day eight. I am going to be finishing up our 12 days of Christmas Facebook lives this week. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday will be day 12. So today is day eight. And today's projects are, let me make sure I'm in the right place. Yep. <laughs> today's projects all feature the Merry Snowflakes stamp set. Now, the sad news is the stitched snowflake dies that are featured with this stamp set in the holiday catalog have sold out. We've been talking about this for many weeks now. The last chance list means last chance, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, but we have another set of snowflake dies in the annual catalog called So Many Snowflakes, I believe. Let me double check that. I just looked it up. Yep, So Many Snowflakes. So that's an easy swap if you didn't get the stitched snowflakes. Um, this is a pretty good substitution. So that's what we're gonna do today. Um, at first I had thought maybe I shouldn't use this set, but then I thought, well, the stamp set is still available, at least at the last chance, the last time I checked, which was, I think this morning, you never know, you never know when things are going to sell out. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to do some watercolor. We're going to make a shaker card. Um, and of course a 3d project. Hello everybody. It's good to see you. Let me open up my, um, iPad. All right, good. I see all of you there. Good. All right, I'm going to just tell you two things and then we're going to get started. Tomorrow is the last chance to register for the Days to Remember. If you see over my shoulder right there, I have already started cutting. There are a ton of die cuts in this class. So I've been actually working on this for over a week. Um, but the cutoff is tomorrow. Um, you have to email me for that registration link. I can't list it on social media or my blog for a Stampin' Up! policy, but I can send it through email. If you are on my email list, then you've gotten it several times. Um, so if you wanna go back and look in your emails for me, you can find it if you wanna register. If not, shoot me an email and I will send it to you. Um, it has 12 calendar cards. They're all different and they each feature a different bundle that we used during club my club create over the last about 15 months i think some of them go a little bit longer than a year but they are all current they're all different all right i am going to send you everything that you need that isn't cut with those bundles so when you go look at this page that describes this class it'll have all 12 bundles that i used um, for each of the, the cards so if one of those are listed I won't cut those for you. I will just send you the paper. Um, but like for this one, I'll include the snowflake. I'll include the label. I'll include that label. I'll include that. You will need the, the trees because that's the bundle that is listed um, as one of the 12. You're gonna get a lot with this class. So you're gonna get 12 calendar cards. You're gonna get a whole pack of these adorable what a year memory and more cards. That's what we use. You can see the little pink there. That's what I've been using for a lot of the paper. You're gonna get five bolts of twine. You're gonna get a whole pack of pearls. You will need the Days to Remember stamp set. You can get this class with a stamp set or without. Right now, the stamp set is on unorderable, um, but it's coming back the week of the 20th. So if you haven't registered and you need the stamp set, you can still register um, your class. I had on their original ship date December 21st, so it probably wouldn't be delayed too much um, if you needed the stamp set. I have, if you've registered, I've already ordered all your stamp sets. I did that quickly <laughs> um, as soon as I saw them on the um, low inventory list. Stampin' Up! makes the stamp sets in-house, so it doesn't take them too long to make them. It's not like they have to wait for them to be shipped from wherever. Um, so anyway, the deadline for that class is tomorrow. You can register for the class kit. It comes right to your mailbox. It has a PDF. There's a page in the PDF for each page of the calendar. There's also a short video at the beginning of the PDF. There's a link there um, that shows you how, you how to use this really cool stamp set. Um, you can see those numbers down at the bottom. That's one long stamp and it fits perfectly on your ink pad to make your stamp, your calendar, your month, which is really cool. 
Um, so you can get it with a stamp set, without the stamp set, or PDF only. If you don't want me to mail you anything, you just want the PDF, that is an immediate download from my PDF store. I'll update this video with all the links when I'm done. You can also go to pinkbuckaroo.com and find all the details there. All right. All right. That is that. Um, let's see. Last chance list. I probably don't need to tell you guys about that again. <laughs> Last chance list still going on, retired list. Um, retired list is out, that's what last chance list means. And uh, things are while supplies last. I'm trying to get out my other catalog so I can show you. This catalog starts January 4th. This is our new spring catalog, along with Celebration. Celebration's the best because you get something free with every $50 that you spend. That all starts January 4th. So start looking for information on all of this towards the end of December. Once we get past Christmas, I'll really start talking a lot about this. Um, if you need catalogs, if you have ordered with me in the last year, you will get one in the mail, uh, Stampin' Up. I have ordered them through Stampin' Up, so they will automatically mail you one. It probably won't come until the last week of December. Um, but if you are new or you don't have a demonstrator um, and you'd like one, please message me. I'd be happy to send you one. Okay, that's it. So tomorrow... Day nine, we will be doing um, sweet little stockings. I have a little dog on one of the projects that looks like Pepper. I can't wait to show you. So hopefully tomorrow you'll join me again. Tomorrow, I have two o'clock central down. Um, my amazing housekeeper will be here tomorrow um, and she is usually not gone by then. I think it'll still be okay if we start at two. Um, yeah, we'll just say, say we'll We'll be at two, start at two o'clock, same time tomorrow. My oldest daughter's coming home today too, so she'll be here tomorrow as well. <sighs> so begins the chaos of Christmas break. <laughs> um, okay, that's it. That's all I'm gonna tell you. Um, door price, if you go to pinkbuckaroo.com, um, you look down to the bot, towards the bottom of the post, there is a sentence that says, click here to fill out a form to be registered for the door prize. You answer a question. I think today I'm asking you about how you wrap your presents. And then you give me your mailing address. I'm not doing anything with your mailing address except mailing you a prize if you're the winner. I literally open it, pick the random number, copy, paste, delete. So don't feel worried about giving me your, your address. I'm not going to do anything with your address. I'm not even going to look at it unless you're the winner. Today's winner is Cindy Spears. So Cindy, thank you. Um, I have your mailing address and I have your label already printed out. So that will be going out to you tomorrow. She's win She's won the classic cloche bundle. How many times am I going to have to say cloche? The word I don't like. <laughs> Today, I'm giving away Arctic Bears. We are doing Arctic Bears on Wednesday. Wednesday, you guys. I came up with some cute stuff. So, Arctic Bears, no longer on low inventory. At least, I don't think it was. Um, for, for some reason, the stamp set was on low inventory for a little while, it seemed, I think. Or maybe it was the dies. Anyway, it's in stock, and I've got two projects to show you. Okay, this is a great non-Christmas set. Um, when I was looking at it, I was like, "This really isn't a Christmas step. i um, Christmas stamp set. It doesn't really have Christmas um, sentiments. So that's more of like a, you know, carry you on through the year stamp set. All right, so there is that. I think we're ready to go. Let me flip you guys around. Let's see. We have. Once again, chaos out in the cul-de-sac. Today, they're not repairing the road. It's the AT&T people here burying cable. They're digging in our yards. Finally, they've gotten to that point. <laughs> it's been threatened for months and months. We've had them all over our neighborhood, and now it's finally our turn. Hopefully, there will be no ruptured gas lines, water lines, and all that. So if you hear beeping in the background, I apologize. There's nothing I can do about it. Okay, so today, Merry Snowflakes. Like I said at the beginning, this has matching dies. Um, and when I say matching, it's more like coordinating dies. And they were stitched snowflakes. I use those to design my projects today. They're not available anymore. But we have another snowflake stamp set that is available. That's an excellent snowflake, I mean, um, die set. We have an excellent snowflake die set available that you could use in conjunction with this stamp set. If if you don't have any snowflake dies, it'd be really good. So just a heads up that today's projects feature 
the, the dyes that are gone. Um, but the show must go on, right? And we're just be making some substitutions. I know a lot of you do already have or you already bought those stitch uh, snowflakes because you love the stitch dies as much as I do. So anyhow, let's get started. Okay, so I have to tell you that this card is a shaker card and it is a case of, well, kind of loosely a case of this card that my downline Patty sent me for my birthday back in September. It's been sitting on my desk since then because I knew I wanted to do this. This is a really cool way to do a shaker. It's like the cheater method, I think, because it's so easy. You just use one of our clear envelopes. Have you guys seen our clear envelopes? Let me just show you because sometimes I don't think people see, have even noticed that we have these clear envelopes. Right here on page 136, we have vanilla envelopes, white envelopes, and then way in the back are our clear envelopes. And you can actually mail a card in a clear envelope. I think you have to put a little extra postage on it if I remember correctly, but I have received cards in clear envelopes. I've mailed cards in clear envelopes. It's really kind of fun. Um, but here we're gonna use it to create the shaker. So thank you, Patty, for the inspiration. The first thing we're gonna do though is watercolor. Whenever I have snowflake, a snowflake um, stamp set, I always wanna do watercolor background. I don't know why, I just immediately, that's what I go to. So we're gonna use Daffodil Delight, which I don't know if we necessarily even need the Daffodil Light. I think probably substituting Clips of Coral would be fine. Um, Magenta Madness and Rich Razzleberry. Magenta Madness is our main color. Um, we're gonna use these clear blocks as our little palette. So let me open these all up. When you buy our new water painters, there's actually three in the pack and this wide one right here is perfect for what we're about to do. It's wide and it's gonna cover a lot. Let me get it wet. Can you guys hear that noise out there? The first thing you wanna do is get your um, watercolor paper all wet. I have taken a full sheet of watercolor paper and taped it down to a piece of cardboard um, with just painter's tape. And I'm gonna get it nice and wet, okay? And then I'm gonna start with Daffodil Delight at the top. All right, and I'm gonna do this all the way down, starting at the top each time so it's a little bit darker at the top. Okay. This is like relaxing to me. I could do this for hours. All right, so now I'm gonna set that aside and get the Magenta Madness. I'm gonna grab that, squeezing just a little bit to get it wet. And we're gonna start up from the bottom and we want that color to bleed together. That's gonna create that, um, you know, ombre kind of, kind of a sunset feel. Always starting at the bottom so the heaviest color is down at the bottom. The darkest color will be there. Okay, now you can just do this, keep going and going and going and going and adding lots and lots of color. Um, the more color you add, the more vivid it's gonna be. Um, let's do a little bit of Calypso Coral at the top. Like I said, I really do think that you could skip the Daffodil Delight and just do that Calypso Coral if you wanted. Um, you know, I, I do these projects ahead of time, way ahead of time, and then when it's time, I can't remember what I did. <laughs> that happens a lot. So um, when I was getting everything out for this card, I was like, I think I used Daffodil Delight, but I'm not sure. Um, because when you, it's orangey at the top, because when you start to mix that pink with the yellow, um, it turns orange. But see, I'm, I'm continuing to just add and go up, making it dark at the bottom, all the way up. Okay, last but not least, I'm gonna do a little bit of Rich Razzleberry. And you wanna be careful with Rich Razzleberry because it's very dark. Okay, make sure you got lots of water um, so that your colors are gonna blend together. And as you pull it up, everything's gonna blend. Isn't that beautiful? 
Now, one thing you can do is set it aside to dry and then do it again, okay? Um, that's gonna give you more intense color, um, the more layers that you do. All right, I think I am done. I think I'm gonna leave it. But the very last thing I'm gonna do, you guys know I love to put salt on my watercolor. So this is just kosher salt. And I'm gonna just sprinkle it all over there and let it dry, all right? Now, for the sake of the video or the Facebook Live, I have done this ahead of time, so we won't have to wait for it to dry because I did use a lot of water. <laughs> There's probably gonna take a while to dry. So let me clean up just a little bit and I will pull that one over here. Um, if you're worried about your blocks, just take them to the sink, wash them with dish soap and they'll be fine. All right. Now, so when this is dry, let me move this one out of the way over here. Let me bring in just some scrap paper like this. When this is done, you bring it over and you're just gonna rub off all that salt like that. See that, how it leaves that little texture? And every time you do it, it's gonna look different than the time before. Every time. It's gonna give you a different look. Okay, now let's take it off and we're gonna cut it down. Got salt everywhere painters tape should release it pretty easy um, but again I, I um, cut my piece bigger than it needed to be so we're gonna cut it down and we're actually gonna cut it down uh, Patty did hers like four by five and a fourth but we're gonna do ours a little bit smaller and I'm gonna have to measure because I don't remember let me see, let me see, let me see. Let me get my trimmer. And then we'll get our ruler. And we'll see, I'm gonna cut it down to three and three fourths by five and a half, okay? So three and three fourths, I actually, let's start on this side. We need to straighten up, we need to get one straight edge without the white. Oh, I didn't go over far enough, let's try it again. Three and three fourths by five. So right there. Now this piece right here, I'm gonna show you another project using this piece when we're done. Three and three fourths by five and a half is what I said, right? All right, let's see. I don't wanna cut off too much down here. So let me start like that. And then five and a half. I think I'm gonna make it just a tiny bit a sliver smaller than five and a half so that it doesn't hang off of our card at all. All right, so pretty. Now you could stamp some things on there. Um, I didn't, but you could. You get all of this. Here is the clear envelope. And I'm gonna put in these subtle shimmer sequins. These are still available. They're like a thousand little sequins. And I'm going to put this down in here like this, pushing it down to the corner because the envelope's gonna be bigger than the piece that we just made. Okay, and then I'm gonna just add a bunch of them in there. And I'm gonna fold that over like that, okay? Now, we want it to be nice and tight on that edge. So my, right here, I'm just gonna take masking tape and I'm actually gonna fold, kind of like you wrap a present, fold that corner down so that it doesn't stick out. Fold that corner in, pull it nice and tight, and then we'll put one for good measure right in the middle. And now you have your shaker. Isn't that easy? Love it. Okay, so now we've got our card base right here. This is a Magenta Madness card base and we're gonna put it flush on the right side. I'm gonna put a um, Blackberry Bliss stitched scalloped border, which is from, let's see, 
which side do I want that on? Yeah, this side. Um, which is from the pen flower dies. All right, now let's see if I can get this off. Let's see, come on, there we go. Okay. Set that down right on that Blackberry Bliss. I don't know if I said that or not. All right, and then we're just gonna glue that right to our card base. Isn't that pretty? Let's see, I think I will just use my stamp and seal. And I'm gonna give it quite a bit so that it will hold on to that clear envelope. Oh, come on. <laughs> it's really held on. And there we go. So there's your card base. So now we're just gonna decorate it. And I have already cut out everything that we need. I have um, the second smallest, no, I'm sorry, second biggest, second largest um, Taylor tag, uh, Taylor made tag. And we're gonna stamp that with Seasons Greetings in Rich Razzleberry. There we go. And we're gonna put that on with some dimensionals. Like that. Right about there. And then I've got some um, snowflakes that I've cut out of basic white. And we'll just use some um, Tombow. And put that one kind of coming out. And then I've got a little one that can go under right here. Like that. And then last but not least, we'll add a bow. And that is it. Now, I told you I had a second card to show you, and I don't know where it is. I took it out to take a picture of it this morning. So, I wonder where that means it is. This is our, oh, what's it called? Glitter organdy ribbon. The whole supply list for both projects is at the bottom of today's blog post. And ta-da! How fun is that? I think it's a lot of fun. Thank you, Patty, for the inspiration. Okay, now let me look real quick for that card. It may be on my other tray. It is not. Hmm. Maybe it's with the other card, but it's photographed. Darn it, if I lost that, I'm gonna be mad. Aha, here it is. Okay, so what I did with this strip right here is I cut it down and just glued it to a basic white card base. And in the snowflake, stitch snowflake dies, if you have them, there are dies that just do the stitching. They don't do, they don't cut out. So I did that a little bit on the background, stamped that on a stitch rectangle, put some cut out snowflakes and some opal rounds. So you can make the most of your little extra piece there. Now, if you don't have the stitch snowflakes, you can still do this with just leaving the stitching off. I mean, you don't have to do that. Um, you could emboss it, you could leave it white, whatever. All right, what do you guys think? That That's fun, right? And that's like, um, like I said, a che the cheater method <laughs> for a shaker card, but I think a completely acceptable cheater method. I think, you know, shaker cards sometimes are tedious and hard and messy, so, you know, it's all right, you can cheat. You can cheat. Okay, second project. Let me pull that over. Move these out of the way. And let me show you our second project. Okay, Mac, you've already had your cookie, go on. You don't need to hang around for another cookie. <laughs> Where did I put the box? You guys, why am I losing everything today? I'm in the middle of a thousand things. Okay, you know what? I just pulled that over. 
seriously? I just used it to cut the sample and now it's gone. Hmm. Am I just looking at it? Is it, it should be right here. <laughs> well, it's gonna be a surprise then. Don't worry, I know how to make it. That is so weird, do you guys see it? Why isn't it here? Hmm. Well, that's a mystery. Hmm, 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 hmm. Pepper, did you take it? Knowing you, you probably did take it. Okay, that's all right. Well, well, it'll be a mystery stamping project. You don't know what we're gonna make, all right? We are gonna make, you know what though? I do need my little notepad. Okay, good, I do have that. Or otherwise, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> that's really weird, it's totally gone. It's totally gone. That's so weird. All right, anyhow, we're gonna make a little box, a really cute box for these snowflake marshmallows. These go in your hot cocoa, isn't that cute? And I got them at Target in the um, Christmas, you know, section with all the little snacks, and they were a dollar. And when my mom and I were shopping in Fredericksburg on Friday, I saw them in a candy store for $4.50. I was like, um, wow, that's a huge markup. So get on my target. I tried to find them online and I couldn't find them. So I don't know, but they were in store. Okay. Uh, I'm so distracted by the fact that I have lost that box. I really don't need it, but it's just annoying me that I don't know where I put it. Huh? So weird. You're going to start with, it's a, it's a mystery. Um, you're going to start with an eight and a half by 11 inch piece of magenta madness cardstock. Okay. You're going to score the, let's do the short side first, three fourths of an inch, four inches, four and three fourths and eight. And then you're going to turn it on the long side and score it at three fourths, six and three fourths and seven and a half. Um, the measurements are on my blog post today. If you need them, if you need to see them, we're going to round the lid on this box. I wish I could show you, <laughs> but I will show you. Let's see. My bone folder is also missing. I know where that is though. That will be right over here. In the drawer. All right. So we're going to, we need to do a bunch of things to this box before we actually assemble it. Hopefully I can remember all the steps before we actually assemble it. So go ahead and burnish all your lines. I will probably find it in the backyard. That's where Pepper takes all her treasures. Um, <laughs> when she runs with something. Um, I bought a really cute, like a garland that had little stuffed gnomes on it in Fredericksburg, and we found it in the backyard. And she had ripped two of them off. She's very naughty. All right, <laughs> um, this side is the first side that we scored. That is three fourths of an inch wide. And then this is half an inch, okay? So let's start on that half of an inch side. You're gonna cut all the way down like this okay like that and then cut these this each end of that tab at an angle now we're gonna cut off I gotta remember this rectangle and that square and that rectangle okay so go all the way across one ah, I'm gonna have to straighten that up two, three, okay, like that. Now, this is really weird, but just trust me, we're going to cut out this middle section right here. So fold those tabs. Actually, that one we don't need to fold, so just go like this all the way across like that 
okay? And then this one, we want to fold in as well, like that. Okay, so, so far, that's what we have. Now down here, all you need to do is cut these apart. Um, you could cut them at an angle too, which will help your box go together a little bit better. If I don't do this, I always have a little bit of cardstock hanging over the edge. I don't know, do you guys do that too? Okay. And like that. All right, so let me lay it down so you can see exactly what it looks like. This is weird, I know, but it's gonna work, I promise. Okay, so now, this is gonna be the front side of our box. See how that's gonna fold over like that? This right here is the front side of our box. So we're going to stamp, uh-oh, I forgot my, I forgot my ink pad over here. With Magenta Madness ink, we're just gonna stamp the smaller snowflake all over the front. And I guess you could do the back too if you so wanted to. But I think I'll just stick with the front for now. Now, oh, and I, did I get that other? I did not. So you know what we'll do? Let's see, we'll use, I was gonna use the little, I thought I had pulled that out. I was, hmm. I was going to use the little bubble stamp from the Penguin stamp set to do this, but if you have a pencil, you can just use your eraser too with your white ink. And just add some dots. Well, I added one there I didn't mean to do. So we'll have to make it a dot. It looks like a drift or something. All right, so add your cute little dots. I mean, dots make everything cute, I think. Hmm. I mean, let's do a lot of dots. <laughs> Never too many. Okay, now let me wipe that off so I can use that eraser again someday if I need it. Okay, now let's get the heat tool and dry that because craft ink is a messy ink. It's our embossing ink and we, uh, it doesn't dry real fast. So you need to hit it with a heat tool or give it lots of time to dry. You could emboss these if you wanted to, but I don't really think that you need to. All right. Now there's one more thing we're gonna do to this box before we assemble it. We're gonna round the flap the front flap with one of our basic border dies. Okay. So I'm going to use this one right here. And we're going to round that flap like that. But before we do that, let's put on our designer series paper. This paper is from the Blackberry Beauty designer series paper, which I thought had sold out but it did not, it's still available, I just checked. And, or I checked yesterday, because I thought it was gone. So put that on there, okay, it's three and a fourth by, well, let me, let me make sure, let me see, three and a fourth by three and a half, I believe, yeah, three and a fourth by three and a half. All right, so to do this, to get it to fit into your machine. You're going to have to fold it up. Okay, hopefully our dots are all dry. <laughs> and I'm going to use my post-it tape, which is probably with my box somewhere. Nope, it's right here. I have a bunch of stuff piled up in here because I am in the middle of Club Create and Make It Takes for this and calendar class it's probably that box is probably buried all right so put that down on there run it through just enough to cut off that edge let's see how we did carefully peel that paper off and so now you have a stitched rounded edge all right now we're ready to put our box together 
I'm just gonna use my stamp and seal and I'm gonna fold that over. Oh, those, those dots are not dry. All right, and then we'll, do you guys hear that? That's a really weird sound coming from outside. Something's happening. I closed the blinds so I wouldn't be distracted. So I don't know what's happening. All right, fold up the bottom. <laughs> Never a dull moment around here, I tell you. Never. All right, so fold in that bottom. Push it down. And that is what our box looks like. All right. Now our little, our little marshmallow cocoa topper slide. I folded in that top part and folded it in like that, okay? And then you want to get your, these are button magnets, and I linked them today. I remembered to link them. They're from Amazon, and I have found that two glue dots on each side works the best. Okay, hot glue works really well too. And I'm gonna put that right there. And set that down. And let me pull them apart so we can press them down. Well, magnet's being very stubborn. Okay, let's see, where did I want you? Right there, all right. So get your magnets lined up, push them in really well, and then close your box. All right, last but not least, I've got several things for us to stack up and decorate. Very cute. I have a two and a fourth inch um, Rich Razzleberry Circle layered onto a um, just a white scalloped circle that's just a little bit bigger. And then I'm gonna put a basic white snowflake right there. And then in the middle of that, all with dimensionals, of course, I'm gonna do a Magenta Madness stitched heart, which is from the Give It A Whirl dies. And we'll put that right there. And last but not least, let's stamp our sentiment, which says, Mary everything. Very cute. Let me pull it down so I can look. And there we go. And that's on a stitched rectangle. And we're done. Easy peasy. Easy peasy right there. So cute, right? So cute. See how those worked out? That that weird, how that was weird on the end, but it folded over because I wanted that rough edge to be in the back, so I put it on that end. Um, this is bothering me a little bit, so let me trim this. I don't know if you guys can even see that, but it's hanging over just like a tiny bit. All right, now remember, measurements are over at pinkbuckaroo.com as well as the supply list. There's a link to those button magnets if you need them. I use them all the time. And that is it for today. We actually have a bonus project today. All right, you guys, that went by fast. I hope you enjoyed it today. I love, of course, Magenta Madness. Um, I use it whenever I can. And... Um, Again, if you did not get those stitched snowflakes before they sold out, we still have the so many snowflake dies, which are a perfect substitution. All right, you guys, that's it. Oh, I totally forgot to tell you. There will be three make and take sent to everybody who orders by Monday at midnight, which is today. And the other two projects, are well i don't even have those out here it'll be the the santa candy bar do i really not have those sitting right here the santa candy bar and i did end up using one of the oh great tidings card it'll be that one and oh here it is and 
this one. These will be the three projects I send to anybody who puts in an order by tonight at midnight using that host code, minimum order, $35, and I'll send you the three projects for free. All right, you guys, have a wonderful evening, and I'll see you again tomorrow. Thanks for joining me. Bye.